This episode is brought to you by Neo Books and Coffee. Neo Books and Coffee is an independent bookshop and coffee bar housing a wide collection of both English and Arabic books and a coffee bar that serves and sells the finest quality coffee beans and exquisite teas. Hi there, this is Wafa Labedat. You are listening to the Women Power Podcast, a subsidiary platform to the Women Power Summit, the largest event in MENA, with the aim of empowering women and helping them achieve their absolute highest potential. Each week on the Women Power Podcast, you will hear honest, vulnerable, authentic, real conversations from inspiring women. These women will share their experiences and stories into what it takes to build a successful business and career. The podcast will share insight and inspiration and hopefully inspire action and lead change. Faranek Portazar is a professional mountain biker and cyclist. Though a structural engineer by profession, her love and passion for biking didn't stop her from achieving her dreams. Born in Shiraz, her real fight started long before she could even compete on a racetrack. She professionally started her career in 2014 with the national team of Iran and won multiple national titles and became the first ever female Iranian cyclist, which led her to winning a bronze medal in the 2019 Asian Championships. Welcome, Faranak. How has COVID been treating you for the past six months? How have you been using this time? I was lucky to have my Asian Championship uh, right before the this pandemic start, and I could uh, win the medal there. Uh, but in the start, when the pandemic started, I was also frustrated like many people. But then I try to just think and find the best way possible so I can uh, use it for my own benefit, not just have a like an obstacle for me, which I will be victim of this condition. And I think all the time in every condition and situation, we can be the winner and we can be the loser. And I tried my best to not be the loser because I don't want to, I'm living just one time and I want to use it the most. And I'm happy I had so many friends and coaches and people who will help me. And we try to have the best plan. Did you have a really bad day during this experience uh, where you hit rock bottom and how did you try to get out of it? Absolutely, of course, because uh, all my races were canceled, all my plans were just stopped, everything. I was really sometimes like frustrated, will it finish or no? And I was in in the start, maybe I was hoping just the way that it started suddenly, it would just disappear suddenly as well. But I said, no, this is going to stay. And uh, I, I, I was like some days when I wanted to sleep, I was so down and I was crying without even I want, but... Then I said, my friends, and I tried to speak with my coach, with my psychologist, and they were helping me really a lot. And it was really good because uh, opposite of many other writers and athletes, which they struggle with the motivation, I was lucky that I wasn't struggling with this at all. I was really, most of, I would say, most of the time, I was really motivated to go on training and to go by plan and improve. You said you had a psychologist or a therapist. Why do you have a therapist? Being a professional athlete, it means that you're on really on an edge. Everything should be on the top of the best, you know. So when we are facing so big challenges, it's really important if we how we treat that in that uh, situation. If you are the captain of uh, a pilot in an airplane, so it's really crucial in some moments that you decide the right decision. So for us, it's also in the races, it happens a lot that you face some really something that is unexpected and you need to treat it well and you need to decide well so you can have the best result because never Never. This is my experience. You, uh, life goes by your plan fully. You know, you always have something coming up that you never expected. And so we work with the psychologists that we work on a mental. This is absolutely, I think also, if I don't work as a athlete, I will s- still be in contact with my psychologist because mental is as important as physical health. The way that I go doing running or cycling or whatever. It's important that I also train my mind to be healthy, to be happy. It's like mind management or thought management, because obviously what you think can affect your body and your behavior. So you want to, yeah, you want to spend as much time in the gym and 
working on your physical self as well as your as your mind i'm a big believer in that as well therapist from iran or do you do like an online therapist with a different country because my coach my nutritionist and many of my coaches they're not iranian because i like to have the uh, i try to find the best knowledge or like the science and everything but uh, i think about the psychologists it's important that they know about the culture and tradition and they understand it and Uh, so this is for me more important to find a good psychologist in Iran rather than other countries because it's hard to under to explain to another person out of Iran how it is the culture how I raised and grown up in Iran you know but they are familiar and they are know so they can easily understand the background and work with me. What was it like growing up in Iran? I think it's uh, not it's many other countries with my experience which I traveled to some countries in Asia I would say we were raised in a more traditional society rather than European or American like also Middle East is like this that we are more family based and uh, I was also uh, raised and grown up with this that we had so really the straight ethics we knew what to do and what not to do from one side it's good from one side it's not it's not good because you're most of the time you're, you need to control you are in control you are not free of choices how do you feel about all the negative press that iran has globally i think maybe uh, five years ago it changed from five years ago because uh, the more that internet works and people globally just uh, we have more connection together we know things better uh, rather than through only medias because iran is really different if you are coming in person or if you are just listening from media we have really welcoming people we have a uh, hospitable people and it's safe here but when you hear from media i'm sometimes frustrated what is going on you know when i'm outside and uh, they said it's war it's so insecure everything they're having just maybe so many bad things but really it's not right it's not right and mm, i think when uh, so much people we are coming here and also so many friendship and connection that it is happening to worlds many people now they uh, separate what they think about iran uh, from media and this i like it and i i'm also learned not to judge people just from and countries from what i see in media yeah i'm sure it can be frustrating and you're right i think what happens between governments doesn't necessarily reflect the people and the actual feeling of you know how the people feel towards things so i can't wait to come and visit iran my experience is one time i would not name that country but there was a country i was visiting uh, for a uh, cycling and i saw before i go to that country there was there is not really good relation with uh, my iran and that country and many were warning me please be careful there is really not uh, safe be careful they were how they were reacting to you and it was one of my best experience i'm not exaggerating i really would like to name that country but it, it better not but i would say because when i came back to iran i said i was so so much welcomed by the people there and they were treating me so well and so honest and so straight that i was ashamed of how i was thinking before i go there and i was ashamed of my thinking and i this was really something that is stuck in my mind for always not to be not to have a negative attitude toward people farnak i love that because i think we're so bombarded at least with negativity sometimes yeah it's very easy to assume that can reflect on the people but i think everyone is different and everyone has their own personality and we really shouldn't judge like you said and yeah you just reminded me of that you're right like you know the world you know the internet has made the news democratic you know we have to also put effort to see the full picture and not just see it from one specific point of view what was your first experience with professional biking how did you know that this was what you wanted to do in your life Uh, well, I was started cycling from 
I think four or five years, every other child riding in neighbors and like this. But uh, because of the culture, I don't know how it originated and just start in Iran. They didn't think that it's not decent thing from to see a woman on a bike. So I didn't uh, continue this sport. And for a while, like for maybe f- 15 years, uh, I was just doing all other sports, mostly indoor sports. And I experienced all of them, but they would interest me only for a short period and then I was bored of them but I was all the time had biking in the back of my mind and I dreamed to explore the world and understand the other cultures and peoples by bike because it's I, I was thinking that this is what we are living for to know the world in a different way and I was I think 19 uh, it was a night I went to our backyard and secretly because without my brothers know I uh, jumped on his bike which was too large for me I was just wanted to try if I have the balance on it and if I can ride it at all and I remember I was so with joy and so happy there was no light there in that night but I remember it like it was day it was so bright it was so shining around me because I was full of joy I was the happiest person in that moment and this really stayed with me that every time I was on bike, I was enjoying so much. The joy was not comparing to any other thing. I was a couch potato, actually, till my 19. I'm not joking at all about it. But uh, the moment I started cycling, can you believe that you have a habit for 10 years and in one week you change it? I was completely not anymore sitting behind the TV and watching, I don't know, movies for 10 hours a day. I was totally, completely another person. What a transformation. That's crazy. You're one of the lucky ones, Farinak, because people spend all their lives and they never have that experience where their moment or their life has shifted because they found their passion or they've tapped into their purpose. This is also... I believe also this is a, like a turning point for me because it was absolutely a turning point for my life. Because of my experience, I know how it feels if you find what you love and what your passion is. I'm really motivated to inspire others to find for their love, what they love and what they like a lot. And because I think love is the thing that would move everything. And for me, because it works that way. And... This is something that I'm passionate about it. Can you tell me about your family? Were they supportive of your career trajectory? When I started cycling, they weren't really like this because they were really concerned about the future because there was no future in cycling for women in Iran. There were no medals, no achievement, nothing in there. And also the way that the society was looking at a woman on bike wasn't really nice. So they were really trying all their best to change my mind that I stick to my study as a civil engineer and continue that. But I was so much passionate about cycling that I didn't, I stayed and I really stayed committed to it. And we had a lot of discussions, maybe I don't know, for a long time that they wanted to convince me. But uh, when they saw that I'm so determined about this and how I love cycling, they slowly changed their mind. And they now they're my biggest fan. They're so much supportive. And I'm so grateful for having them. Did you have any specific experiences with them? I remember exactly. uh, I had a really bad crash. I think the first year they started cycling and I broke my two arms. I was amateur, I would say. It's not that dangerous. (laughs) Don't worry. (laughs) I was really amateur. And uh, so my mother was really so much afraid and so frustrated about cycling. And she told me, forget about cycling. Not even, don't even think about it anymore. And I remember I was struggling three months and I was speaking with some psychologists how can I convince my mother because okay the European would not understand but here we need have our families to be happy and uh, to be concerned about what we are doing and I was trying three months to convince her that I really love this that was a mistake forget it and it worked and exactly Two months after that, I could win my first ever national uh, medal. 
And then she completely started to believe, yeah, she really won it. And now every time I go to Asian Championship and international races, she's just calling my uh, families or relatives that she pray for her, pray for her that she gets successful and get the medal. And this is really nice. That's so Muslim of her. Yeah, but this is how they're happy and I like it because this is the way that they find their confidence and feeling good in this. And I respect that because also when I was talking to a psychologist, they said that this is how they feel more safe about you and less concerned about you. So give them this secure that you are safe. You don't. You will not have problem and they will agree with you what you want. And this really happened. Your therapist is amazing and you're amazing for (laughs) why is my mother like this? You know, like give her this gift, let her pray for you and let her call you. That's so powerful. I feel a lot of it is also just accepting our family for what they are and not wanting to change them to be anything but themselves. When you said that society wasn't very happy or society's thoughts about women cycling is not very good. Can you tell me more about that? Did you face any criticism publicly in the media in in your, you know, maybe in, with your relatives or with family? Like, did you feel any negativity from society? As I said, I really don't know how it originated. It comes to our culture about cycling because cycling originally, it's not something bad. Uh, and also like horse riding, which is really something good for us as a Muslim and uh, but uh, I don't know because they're so similar for me as a uh, for, for me personally I think they're so similar but whatever I I don't know this was not good and uh, the first times I was starting like 10 years ago when I was first time riding the bike I was seeing so many bad things and like criticism from people on the street uh, many would give up on this and they didn't continue cycling because it was not really lo- like really nice they would put you a label maybe that you're not a good person. This is this would affect on your future. And I remember one thing that is I, I like always and I'm proud about it is that uh, in our neighbor also we have a lot of old people living in our neighbors. And you know, they their way of thinking is already fixed and they know what they want and what is good. And I remember that uh, first time I was starting, they were like frowning at me they were like looking at me what the hell she's doing and that's not nice this is so bad but uh, after so many years and when whenever they see my mother or my sister or my father they all say congratulations for all the achievement your girls has achieved oh we are so happy it was so good that we have your uh, uh, you as a neighbor and this is the way that is, uh, I believe that when you are doing something right, even though people are so much against, it's not because they are they don't want they or they hate you, but when they don't understand it. And I, I was so determined that I didn't give up like many others. And I was lucky to be, to have some, to have family and friends, which would help me. And that I changed many of their minds and I was having the effect to introduce professional cycling for women in Iran and like with my achievement with my first ever medal in Asia it would had a big impact on many of the women and girls to get to know cycling and they started and I'm happy and I'm proud about it Neo Books and Coffee is a proud sponsor of the Women Power podcast you can browse their incredible beautifully curated book selection Build your wish list and request out of stock and unlisted titles with the Neo Books and Coffee app, which is available to download on the Apple and Google Play Store. Neo Books and Coffee is an independent bookshop and coffee bar, housing a wide selection of English and Arabic books, stationery, and gifts. Their coffee bar serves and sells quality teas and only the finest Arabica beans. Everything is done to perfection and they have great attention to detail. They also have a stunning drive through station, which you can pick up your books along with your morning coffee on your way to work. To know more about Neo Books, check out their Instagram page and download their app. You were a structural engineer by profession. What is structural engineer? 
it's a film uh, like sub branch i don't know what the exactly the name is but uh, it's from civil engineer it's a master uh, degree for civil engineering why did you study structural engineering strangely my dream when i started structural engineering it was to build and design the bridges i was so much into m- building new ways i was really about this connection i don't know why but i l- like this and <laughs> One funny thing is that when I started cycling it was also nothing no there was no path for women for the for the future and just to be like men and try in international level and I did as an engineer in cycling I made the path I made the way for women with my achievement that they are much more easy for them to come to cycling and try as a athlete in this How did you make the switch? So you said that there basically was no ecosystem for cycling for women. There was no national team. There was probably no training plan, no coaches. So you were like the first person to come. What is the steps to create a national team to get government support for training, to represent your country, to fly to all these things? Like, How did you begin to start to become a professional? Uh, I think it's first step. The way that I uh, changed, uh, start to change my family's mindset about cycling, this showed me that everything is possible. I try to higher steps and bigger dreams. I'm personally a really challengeable person. And I really like to do things which are hard and not easy. I like to do things which look impossible. And when I started cycling, it would look impossible for a girl to get medal at Asian Championship. We, I was not the only girl in Iran which, which was cycling, but I was amongst the pioneers in cycling in Iran. And I really dreamed big to be the first medalist in Asia. And it happened in 2017 and 18 to get the first medal as not only as Iranian girl cyclist, but also a Muslim woman who stand on a podium, international level and continental level. And this was really a big honor for me. Can you tell me about the moment you won? How does it feel to win and stand on the podium? I remember when I passed the finish line, I even uh, like one minute before I pass it, I knew that I, I'm now third in this position. And I remember it really like I have goosebumps now. <laughs> uh, like it was yesterday because exactly the moment that they passed before that, can you believe how many people were saying why you were uh, to the like federation, to the, uh, to the sport people here in Iran? That why you invest so much on women when because they cannot it's impossible you know and I was passing the finish line knowing that I made it and it's not impossible anymore it would be like a memory not a dream and from that moment nobody would think that oh I cannot get medal they would say how can I get the medal and this is something really important and honored for me. I love that. So it's a memory now and not a dream. Have you inspired anyone to take up the sport? Do you feel like there's been a change in your sport after you started competing? I think when I started cycling and I wanted to achieve the medals, not only in Asian level, even higher, one of my biggest goal is to inspire and motivate others to follow their dreams. Because for me, coming to that medal wasn't easy path and a straight and direct uh, way. It was so much ups and downs and more downs, I would say. And maybe I was trying even so much harder than the from other countries to achieve that medal. So for me, uh, reaching to that point was more precious because I knew that we can achieve so many big dreams that we have, determination, with uh, persistence, with everything. And I really want to uh, do this. And uh, since ever since that time that I achieved medal, I've been inspiring a lot of people. I would do a lot of the interviews I do and many things that I do. I try to inspire and motivate others to follow what they would like. Who is funding your coaching and your competitions and flying you and your equipment and organization or are you self-funded? 
okay my support is from my family and part of my uh, support is from our olympic committee but mostly i uh, try just to earn it from some grand prix races i compete and i if when i'm at home and i'm staying at home i would do coaching for others and uh, this i would also earn money but still it's a uh, For bigger goals, it's still a big way and it's really uh, huge things to uh, that I need to pay and uh, a big budget I need. And that's why I'm looking for sponsors. Have you worked with a sponsor yet? For uh, like two years ago, three years ago, for two years I had a sponsor and it was a really huge help for me. I had competed and uh, succeeded in many races also. But then uh, they didn't continue their business. They stopped it. So I didn't have a sponsor anymore. But this would help me a lot to achieve because there are much bigger things to be done. Many underestimate us. Do you have any advice for any athletes who are approaching sponsors? You've had a successful experience with a sponsor for a few years. What are some of the things that you did right to get that sponsor? Being grateful. for what you are doing and what they are helping. The best is to have a good communication and this would help a lot because it will come many times that I what I see from others. They want more, they are just saying more and more and not really grateful for what they have. And this makes people a bit sad and like not anymore appreciating to do what they were doing be appreciative of your sponsor show gratitude and be grateful yeah they will understand like communication and having a good uh, contact with them works really well do you have an agent that helps you negotiate these deals or do you do them on your own no i do it by my own So talking about the biggest adversity Iran faces today, the war and political conditions and severe ties with the U.S. The condition is not easy at all. As an athlete, I try to have a good impact on uh, an effect on uh, the condition when I go out racing and like showing and performing. But I don't have any uh, influence and decision that are making. So I try not to distract myself with this condition. But I try to just work harder, and which I have to do 10 times more harder than other countries to achieve this. But I don't want to let some adversities and something make me a victim of the condition. I don't want in the end to be the loser. Not in sport, not in life. So this is my attitude in everything. What keeps you motivated every day? There's different things. First of all, I love cycling. I, I enjoy riding every time. It's like the first day that I go on bike. Second, I would say because I have a big dream and I want to achieve this. It really matters to me. For me, it's a personal thing that I want to j- just make the check mark that I've done it. And the really one, one really big, big important things for me, I enjoy inspire others. I enjoy helping others because I think this is the ultimate goal for me. And I want to inspire and motivate many other people because I know when I was a teenager as a girl, what I was looking for and how I was thinking and sometimes how I was disappointed and hopeless. And I want to be the example for these girls, doesn't matter, in Iran, in uh, Middle East, in Asia, Europe, America, whoever, because... There are many people who are watching and I attracted so many medias, which will help at least one person. We're very proud to announce our collaboration with a brand that we strongly resonate with and are huge fans of. The Woman Power podcast will be sponsored by Neo Books and Coffee for our upcoming season four. Neo Books and Coffee is an independent bookshop and coffee bar housing a wide collection of both English and Arabic books, stationery and gifts. Their coffee bar serves and sells quality teas from tea pigs and only the finest Arabica beans. They also have a coffee app available on both iOS and Android devices. The Woman Power Podcast is delighted to be working with our new partners and look forward to producing more meaningful content and recognizing our goals together. Watch the space for more exciting details. Can you tell me what is your dream race? So I did Ironman 70.3 in Bahrain. I did it twice. And for any Ironman athlete, the dream is to do Kona and to go to Hawaii to do the full Ironman race. What is your 
dream race or competition that you would love to do one day? I have step goals, <laughs> like step by step, but... Like one of them is that um, I tried hard for Asian Games 2018 and I missed it by a broken chain and I was fourth in the end, uh, but I was second when I missed this. So for me, this is something that I want it back because I believe this medal was mine, uh, this Asian Games. But also then I want qualification for Olympics, for sure. This is one thing I want. And then... I want the world podium, and this is achievable. And I want uh, the bigger, uh, the, some big international uh, podiums as well. So when your chain broke, you weren't able to finish the race. How did it feel? Do you? I feel you're the type that would get very angry and just shout and yell, like you're passionate. Uh, when my uh, chain broke, I remember com- uh, completely that I couldn't believe in the first time because I was sick. Is it possible? Why this time? I was waiting for this game for years. Why this race? And then I was... Uh, because in mountain bike, you only have uh, certain place that you can change your bike and your uh, parts. I ran about, I think, three kilometers to reach that ups and downs to reach our fit zone and change my broken chain. And then I started to just ride and catch all other riders because I was the last rider with, I don't know, six minutes back in the first loop. And then I was all the time thinking, I want to finish the race and show at least to myself when it finished that I was able to finish in top three because the time lapse would the time the loop of the time would show what is everyone uh, timing and i want to I, I said to myself i don't care the result i want to always show myself that i tried so hard and this was possible and when the race finished i saw that it was possible completely at least the second and the silver medal but it was really big disappointment to stand from down and watch the podium ceremony did you cry as soon as as you crossed the finish line or you cried alone like in in the privacy of your own room i prefer to cry where there is no one i don't like to cry in front of people but i was so disappointed that uh, also there you cannot find any place which you are alone i just rode my bike uh, to somewhere and just sat and i was thinking why this happened and I was thinking for at least I think 15 minutes I was trying so hard and what was the reason that I didn't achieve this medal what happened when did you become okay with this I didn't realize the reason Uh, it was something really deep in me but after two years now I would say this was one of my biggest success because actually I showed myself that I'm not a person to give up I'm person that I will fight till the finish, doesn't matter what. And this is something that I'm never regretting because I tried my best and there is no place to regret. I would say I learned from that thing that doesn't matter whatever happened to you, don't stop fighting. You're very honest about your ambition and your need to win and you're, you're unapologetic about it. And usually people who are ambitious, they're not so straightforward with this. I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. And, you know, you say it very freely. And I wonder, you know, where did this confidence come from? This is extremely confident. You really believe in yourself and you want everyone to know that you believe in yourself as well. I think every other pro athlete, if you uh, ask any uh, like success, successful athlete, they will all have uh, one, one thing in common. You need to believe in yourself before everyone believes in you. And it is the truth. If I don't believe that I'm a winner, I will never win. I will never even win a small, small race. I need to believe in and saying that you are a winner is not something that you are proud about it and you are too arrogant about it but i think it's showing that you are positive in a play in a something and you want to have uh, you have a positive approach uh, to it as well you are not just setting back and just saying i give up i don't want to try this is not what the world needs really can you tell me about your favorite ride ever? Not in a competition, but did you ever go riding and you were like, this is my best ride? Uh, as I said, my first ride uh, when I was just start cycling, 
uh, every one of them, I was waking up at five just before everyone goes to, to job, to the work and the streets become so busy that it's not possible for me to go on r- bike. I was every time when I was on bike, I was just laughing and I was smiling all the time without any reason. Maybe someone would look at me. Is she crazy? <laughs> you know, but I was happy about what I was doing. But Personally, I like adventure. I like different things and new things. So whenever I'm bike and I'm especially on mountain bike, riding a trail, for me, that is one thing that I, I know I want it and I don't want to change it with anything else. What is your worst biking experience? Honestly, there is really one thing. Whenever I'm really angry, whenever I'm really upset about one thing and whenever everything bad, I'm full of negative energy and I don't know what to do. I really, I don't know what to do. I just go on my bike and I ride. And after one hour, I'm refreshed. It, it's like that my mind just do a reset and I feel more reasonable, more rational and feeling good. It happens to me, uh, there was one time I was so down, even lower than the ground. <laughs> and so down, so low. I went on and I didn't know what to do, but I went on bike. I was, my feelings was so bad, but I didn't uh, hate my ride. I was, I, I felt better after my ride. Honestly, I have not this experience. Maybe just that one I had bad crash and I don't remember it. What's your workouts like to train to be a champion? Other than riding, what other workouts do you do? Yeah, of course. Uh, you need to build your muscles out of a uh, bike as well in gym. Uh, also at home I have some exercises you need to do you need always to work also to get recovered you can't just lay back and say okay I will recover this will not work in a professional level you need to work for that so yoga work stretching massage many many things you should do in order to get recover or in order in order to enhance your performance it's always how many hours do you bike in a week It depends on the season. It depends if it's uh, in a racing season or it's out of season. When we are out of season, it's more about the hours, more on bike. When we are uh, we are out of uh, racing season, we have more hours on bike, but less intensity. We don't push a lot, but maybe 25, something like this, just on bike. But when we are in racing season, it is less hours on bike but the high intensity. What is your advice for anybody that wishes to pursue cycling who's a woman? Just start to ride and don't give up because you will see so many amazing things. You will experience some experiences that you would never regret why you did it. You will love it. I I, I bet because uh, cycling, uh, also maybe the reason that they stick to it, is a sport for life I learned how to live by cycling I know what you mean because when I used to train for Ironman I used to do 20 hours a week but combination of cycling swimming and running it changed my life I was always outdoors I was in the fresh air I met everybody was high on happiness because it's endorphins right so everyone's like good morning like everyone is in a good mood and then I would go for like a hundred kilometer bike ride, come home and everybody's still sleeping. Why is everybody still sleeping? So it feels like I'm living and people are wasting their time. So during the day, it was just marvelous. And I remember um, sunrise was the best time to cycle as the sun is coming up. It was so wonderful. And I really miss it. Exactly. I think that one of the best feeling is to ride, to ride when sunrise. It's the best feeling. And the weather becomes cool, even if it's, you know, it's very hot here. I'm sure it's also very hot in Iran, but in the summer, but just, you know, between four and 5 a.m., like the change in the air and the clouds and it's beautiful. But also, you know, you learn a lot. You need to ride uh, in order to have the balance. Also for uh, for life is like this. If you stop, you will, you, you will not have balance. You need to ha- ride. You need to have. You need to move towards something to have the balance. Like also, when we are on trails, mountain trails, we say that we have a like expression. You need to dance with the bike, so you have the. You can o- go over many obstacles and uh, on your uh, trail, many like rocks, roots, whatever it is. And also for uh, life is like this. You need to dance with the 
ups and downs in your life so you can live and you can enjoy what you are doing. Is there anyone you look up to in cycling who's a woman? Who's your favorite cyclist that you love how she cycles? Do you love her personality on social media or she's won a lot of different competitions? Like somebody you look up to? Uh, the cyclist, the, one of the cyclists that I really like her, especially because her personality is really more than a champion. And she's Canadian and actually she also won two times world champion and also won t- uh, she won the bronze medal at Rio 2016 Olympics. And she's Catherine Pendrell. She's absolutely like an idol. She has a really great personality. She's so down to earth and so cool. She's really great. So my last question to you is, what is your superpower? Not giving up. Farinak, this was amazing. Thank you so much. That's it for this week. Thank you for listening to an episode of the Women Power Podcast. And thank you for downloading and streaming our podcast every week. If you love what you've heard, tag us on Instagram and follow the Women Power Podcast and Women Power Summit account for more information on our next episode. Please leave a rating review wherever you get your podcast. It really helps other women discover the show. That's it for me. See you next week. Thank you.